So to tie the Kesher Tefillin for a left-handed Sephardi or Hasidic person, you need to make sure that you've completed step two, which shows you how to tie the first knot, which is our bunny. Because you are left-handed, the bunny's ear, when you're looking at it, should be pointing to the left. If you're left-handed, that means your Tefillah Shal Yad will go on your right hand. We're going to take the Ritzuah with the bunny and lay it down on the table so that the ear is pointing towards you. And give yourself a little room to work with. We're going to take the loose end of the Ritzuah and make a loop that sits on top of the Ritzuah here. If you want to look at it from the other side, you'll notice that for the left-handed person, it comes from the top right in front to the bottom left. We're working on the brown side. So we're just going to make sure that the loop sits on top. We're going to take the bunny head and fold the bunny so that the brown lays on the brown of the Ritsua, sort of flat here, with a little bit of neck for the bunny on this side. What's important for the Sephardi knot, which you don't have to do for the Ashkenazi knot, is that at this point you need to double check your tefillin and make sure that the width of this loop at least exceeds the width of the bite of your tefillin because this loop is going to go through the ma'abarta, through this channel here in your bite. And if you have made it too narrow after you finish tying the knot, you're going to have to go back and retie it. So it's good to safety check at this point. From here, holding the neck of the bunny down on top of that loop, we're going to take the tail and fold it up and insert it through the loop of the bunny hole, which means that this is going to make a tight crease you're going to have to keep your finger on. From the other side, if you're doing it from the other side, here we have the bunny head, the bunny's neck, and the bunny's tail is going to fold up and come through the hole At this point, the head of the bunny is going to go around the bunny hole and around the bunny tail and back into the bunny hole. While as carefully as you can, holding that all together. From the back side, You have the folded bunny. It's going to go around the bunny hole and the bunny tail. And come back through the front of the bunny hole. Now again, while holding this folded flat, it's a little bit awkward. You're going to try to hold it firmly, but loosely enough to give you the slack to pull the loose end of this Ritsuwa, which is the bunny hole, and make that smaller and smaller so that it pulls snug against the tail. And you're going to pull on the tail and pull on the loose end and pull on the head a little bit to make that knot nice and snug. So that when you turn it over and look at from the front, you'll see the head of the bunny, the ear is pointing to the left. We have our one, two, three part weave in that knot and then we have the loop. Now, this part's a little more difficult with the Sephardi knot than it is for the Ashkenazi knot because we have a double thickness of Ritsuwa to put through the Ma'abarta. So you're going to feed it through. You might need to have handy, gently, a small screwdriver or a tool that you can put in here to help you push help you push the ritzua so that it comes through the other end of the ma'abarta so that you can pull it through. You want to be gentle. It's fill-in are important and delicate, not necessarily delicate, but expensive and things that you want to be careful with. Now on this side you have the knot right up against the ma'abarta. You have the bunny facing the bite of the tefillin and you feed the loose end of the ritzua 
down through the loop so that your tefillah shal yad is now ready to put on and you are ready to begin wearing your tefillin.